When did Hornady start making pistols? That's kind of weird, isn't it? A uh, weird contraption. Was that a muzzle brake or something? And then it's even made out of plastic. Nah, I'm just teasing, guys. <laughs> Good morning. How are you guys doing? Uh, welcome to my channel. If you ain't subscribed, uh, take a look at my channel, see what I got to offer. Uh, read my profile, see if you might want to join us. And uh, hit that subscribe button if you like it. Uh, if not, uh, watch a few videos, hit the like button. If you don't want to subscribe, the likes really help. Gets the popularity up for my channel. I really would appreciate that. Uh, but uh, we always welcome subscribers. Well, today we're going to talk about the Hornaday uh, Primer Filler. Now, my last video I made, I said I was going to surprise you guys with a different device, cheaper and faster. And this is it. Very reasonably priced. I, uh, I'm not even going to quote your price right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a link in the description box. Because I want to get you guys familiar with looking at the description boxes, okay? Uh, there's places you can buy these cheaper than others. And naturally, I'm going to, I'm going to try to put you in the right place. So you look at the description box, because that, that really is something you guys need to get used to rather than just click on a video and watch it. Because there's a lot of information on these description boxes that people miss. There's many, many links that uh, people can click on and find out more information about the product. There may be other links to other videos that they put in and you can click on the links. And that a lot of YouTubers won't say that in their videos. And I'm trying to say that because it's a, it's a good thing to get in practice of doing as a watcher is click on the description box and look and see what else they got to offer. There might even be in some uh, something in there that you can enter uh, as a prize or they're giving something away or something. You know, they explain all that in their videos usually, but a lot of people just overlook it. But it's a good idea just to take a peek at the description box, okay? Let's get on with this. All right, what we have here is a Hornaday Primer Filler uh, easy way to load primer tubes. Just come right out and say the way it is. Uh, there's no professional name that I call it without going to the website right this second and looking up to see the exact name that they call it. <laughs> I'm sorry guys. I, I gotta tell you on my videos I'm just a laid-back guy, an old man, and uh, I tell it from my experience of how I do things and that's all my channels about the experience it's not about the professional uh, act that everybody puts on when they do a video it's all about the knowledge that I'm giving you and I think that's what YouTube's all about as long as you can understand what I'm talking about and I'm not going off the wall and telling you lies I'm trying to be as honest as I can uh, just you know, just so you guys all know that. So this is very reasonably priced. <clears throat> I'll put a link in the description on the price on it. Uh, and I got this all laid out so you guys can see. I've got many primer tubes here. You know, these are for the large pistol or large pistol and large rifle. They're green tipped. Now they put these plastic ends on so that you can store them once they're full. All right. So these will be the large ones for pistol or rifle. And then you got your yellow ones here the same way. There's only four of them left. The rest of them are full. And uh, they're yellow. And uh, that's all for storage. 
and uh, that's basically what the gun looks like. Uh, you got the tray mechanism where the primers go in, you got the flipper to flip it down, that activates the trigger so that the the gun uh, vibrates everything so that everything shakes inside and it lets all the primers go down in the tube in a matter of seconds. You know, you can you can load these tubes once the thing's filled up and all the primers are all in there properly and I'll show you how that's all done. And uh, you put the gun together and you should be able to load 10 primer tubes up within 10 minutes, maybe maybe 15 minutes at the most. Once you figure out how to do it accurately and you know you know you got to train yourself the pros and cons and you know get familiar with it there's a lot of things that work for me that may not work for you I'm going to show you the way that I do it and it works the best so okay let's uh, get on with it and I'll show you how this thing works okay I've got this set up for easy so you understand it a little better. First you got your black tray that goes with the gun and then you got your box primers. All right? Always open up your box with the label on the top. Okay, the back side is white. Don't don't open it that way. You open it with the, the blue label up and lay your primer box down okay, on the table. Then what you're going to do is you're going to flip this upside down over the top okay got you so far now what you're going to do is you're going to take it to the edge of the table and grab the bottom of the uh, tray of primers the, your pack of primers and squeeze the plate together and then flip it over put it on the table just like that now you just lift lift the cover off the top of there and voila you got it. So now if you have an upside down primer in there, what you're going to do is you're going to take it and you're going to wiggle it around and shake it. Well, we got them all. They're, they're all laying perfectly in there. You don't have to worry about it. But if you do have an upside down one, which most packs come with, the primers are pretty much put up upright. They're not upside down. But sometimes you get some that are upside down and then you gotta shake it. Sometimes they're really bad. They got a whole bunch of them. Then you gotta work at it and get them so that they're, uh, you know, they, they uh, straighten out. But I find that by wiggling them around on a table like this, uh, right now they don't do much because they're all sitting right. But if you had one that was sitting wrong, it would flip over the right way. So I've been, I've been pretty lucky. All the primer has been uh, the right way. Uh, there's been some stubborn ones that don't want to do it, but I don't like to take it in the air and then wiggle around because you have to take a chance of, of, of doing the unexpected and then they'll, they'll fly all over the place and then you got them all over the floor. So I find if you lay it flat on the table and you, and you go like this, you're going to find out that that works out really slick and they flip right over. So you won't have any problem with that. And then the next step is putting the sleeve on over the top. And that's just a matter of getting it started. I don't want to get it started because you got to take it off film. And I want to get a close-up so you guys can see this. So you just slide it on. And now you're good to go. It's all set. And whatever you do, don't, don't tip the, the box itself towards this little guy here because it will fall right out. So you just put them all in the back. They're all laying in the back now, so you're ready to go to the next step. Okay, this is extremely, extremely hard to film here because I'm a one-man operation. I'm trying to get as close as I can. But by putting this, the nipple, I call it a nipple, into the gun, there's a certain way it goes in. It's, it's got a notch in it. So, you know, don't do like I do. You know, you pop it out of the box, and then right away you want to, you know, it's common sense on how this works when you pop it out of the box if you know anything about loading primer tubes. 
you know, out of way you're ready to fly at it. Well, first thing I ran into is I couldn't get this, the uh, the gun to activate, and uh, I had the battery in backwards. So I finally got that figured out. But that's beside the point. So keep your primers tipped forward at all times until we get ready to pull the trigger on this here. All right, and I'll get into that later. All right, but right now. To install this, it has to be perpendicular with the gun. If you try to put it in on an angle, you're not going to slide it in the groove. It's got to be straight with the gun. And then that way you won't have any problems. I fought with it for quite a while when I first got it. I said, what the heck? I can't get it in the hole. What the heck is the problem? So then I started uh, going side to side until I figured out there, there's a special groove that fit, that fit in. And then it went right in. And make sure that you push this down all the way. Make sure it's all the way down firmly. You know, grab the gun with your fingers and push down, you know, with both fingers until you can feel the t bottom out. That way you know it's inserted properly. Okay, get into the tubes. These are the tubes that I purchased from Dylan, and I'll get into that later and tell you where, you, you know, how many you get, how much they are, and everything else. Okay, I'll show you what, what we're going to do with one tube right now. Okay, the tube comes like this. You got a plastic end on it, and then you got a cotter pin on the other end. Okay, well, I can't stress this enough. Always make sure your cotter pin is in the tube, because that's when you store these, that the primers are not going to fall out. And then you're going to have a mess, all right? And when you're doing a, a thousand batches of uh, reload, you know, when you're re reloading a, th a thousand rounds at a time, you want to knock them out within an hour. You want to have all these tubes handy and ready to go. So now you got your, your pin in there, keep it in there. And on the other end, uh, we're not going to do the chicken pecking. Like, you know, you take it, go each one. Pick one at a time because you know you have a tray that you shake around. And you, I I never I remember doing it a long time ago. It's been many many years, but I've gotten this the Dillon machine, the RF 100. I started out with that right off the bat. You know I wasn't going to play around doing this number because when I seen that RF 100. I just took a look at the picture and I, I fell in love with it just looking at it. I, I got to have me one of them, you know. So I bought that and uh, it worked out beautiful. As you can see in my previous video, uh, you're going to find that that really is slick, but it's expensive. And then I ended up putting that away because this, believe it or not, is my secret defense right now. This is way faster. You got all your tubes loaded up. You don't have to mess around with the Dillon RF100 because there's only they only give you one tube at a time. You got one tube for small primer, one tube for large primer. So what you gotta do is you as you're loading a thousand rounds, you gotta put put that device in the machine, dump the primers in, push the button, and it's making a lot of sound, it's distracting you while you're loading. You like to have all your tubes loaded and ready to go. So that's why I did this. I've got, I usually load 10 tubes at a time and then I take a break. And uh, that's why I do the volume I do. And that's with pistol, rifle, and everything I load. I load uh, quite a few calibers. And uh, you're going to say, why do I load so much? Well, because I've got some brothers that shoot with me, and uh, we, we blow off sometimes between 300 to 400 rounds on a Saturday and Sunday at the pistol range. So they go pretty fast, and I do all loading. Because there's no sense having each guy have their own loader when it costs a lot of money. So I won't get into how all the sharing's done. It's none of anybody's business, but... Uh, just so you know, it's it's a relationship. So we, I help my brothers out, and they help me in return. 
So here we go. So that's that's the end of the story on the tube. So you guys all know the safety about the tube, the pin, the end, and right now we're going to take this end off, and we're going to leave it off. We're going to just store it, store it aside. But we're going to use it later. We're going to after this is filled, we're going to put this back on. Okay, now I've got the tube inserted in the gun and I got my flipper down and it's all ready to go. Uh, it won't, like I told you before, it will not work if the cover's up. So the cover's got to be pushed down. And so the, the tube itself here has to be inserted into the bottom and what you do is you hold the plastic black piece with one thumb and then you slide you slide the tube in with the other you know like it's hard see I'm covering it up I can't even show you but you you will get the point once you get this uh, it's not, not that hard and then you, if, if you push it in without holding the black piece what will happen is the tube will, will push you'll push it too hard and then it'll, it'll push the black platform out of its hole so you want to hang on to that black platform at the same time you're pushing the tube in until they bottom out. You want them both to touch. Don't just put the tube in partially because you're taking a risk of primers getting jammed up in between the black plate and the tube itself. So you want that to touch the black platform and then, you know, the two of them got to touch each other and meet so that when you pull the trigger they're all going to fall in place. So now we're going to pull the trigger. You know, shake it to the side, like right here. Get them all down. You can see them all in the corner. All right? And then you just pull the trigger. And you, see, you can see them going in like crazy. Hope I'm catching this on the film. I think I am. You know, all done. Done. Simple as that. Okay, all you got to do is you just pull the tube out, slide it out, put the gun aside, take your yellow cap, slide that on top, like so, and uh, you're all ready to go. There's your tube all full, 100 primers. It's that simple. Now after a while, after you do a lot of these, you're going to get really good at it. You're going to find that you can load 10 tubes probably in about 10 minutes if you do it right. What I do is I take, I take uh, 10 of these boxes and I get them all ready. I tear them all apart, take the tops off, line them all up on the table so they're all ready to go. Like, they will even go this far. Let's see if you can see this here. All right, got it. That box is ready to go. Then you take take this one here apart, and you got them all lined up all around the table. All right, so these are all full. Now some of them are going to be upside down, so you're going to have to take that little plastic device off. Oh, and then when you take this plastic device off, you got to turn it back to get it out. Okay. So now it's out. There's your, there's your little device. And then pull the cover off, of course. Now, there you go. So that's all part. And like I said, you take take all these trays apart. You got all ten of them laid out. But be careful there ain't no kids around or anything or anybody to distract you. Because all you got to do is bump the table. You got primers everywhere. So I lay each one out. You... And if you're not in that big a hurry, you can do one at a time. I'm not saying you got to do ten at a time, but I'm just showing you production ways, you know, how you can speed things up. And uh, you could take it how you want. I mean, there's no reason to be that big a hurry. But that's the way I do it when I'm doing like 6,000 rounds. I'm trying to get them knocked out in one day. You know, so... Anyways, that's that's a good way to do it. You just lay them all out, you're good to go. 
So we'll go to the next step here. Okay, one of the questions you guys are going to ask is where's the battery? The battery is right here in the grip. What you're going to do is just, just like any other one, you pick up this little flipper here and it pops this open and then you put a wafer battery in there. But don't be like me and just stick it in on any old way. You got to know which way it goes, otherwise it won't work. But you know, the more I think about this, I've had this a while and for some reason I had a problem with this particular model. I don't know what happened, it must have happened at the factory, but when I put the battery in, I couldn't get this to activate at all, okay? You know, it would, it would not work. And no matter what I did, I could not get it to work. Now I do remember what happened. I do remember. Uh, I had to send this back, and they sent me a new one. And once I got the new one, everything worked great. So, you know, I'm not, you gotta be careful a lot of times. I mean, it doesn't happen to everybody. It happens to me mostly. <laughs> uh, you end up with a bummer, you know. But uh, that's what the gun looks like. Or the Hornaday, I call it a gun. I think they made it look like a gun, so it uh, relates to the reloading. I think it's kind of neat. Very reasonably priced. Uh, it beats 300 and 30 some bucks for the RF 100. I'm not trying to cut that machine down. That's a great machine. But I found this and now there's other companies out there that make them. I'm going to recommend to stay away from the other ones because the other ones have a tray, this black tray on them that has a nipple on both ends. And when you insert the tray or insert this in the gun what happens is that you gotta be so careful that which way whichever way you have this you may if you forget to shut the door on one end you're gonna end up losing primers because they give you one tray and I think I'm not sure but I think one tray works with both small and large primers on these other machines I have not tested them I have not tested them I bought Hornaday because I have faith in Hornaday I buy a lot of bullet tips from them, and I and I said, what the heck, I might as well just pick one of these up and try it. What's it going to hurt? It wasn't that expensive. So, okay, I just uh, purchased these uh, tubes not too long ago, and uh, I found when I got these, they sent me these, and... I noticed that there's two plastic ends on each end. There's a blue and then there's a yellow. And uh, I thought that's pretty nice. But the disadvantage is, is when you put this on, when you put the pin in, it's, you gotta, it, I guess it isn't too bad, but it seems like it's a little harder to put the pin in than it was the old fashioned way, you know? That's just my opinion. Uh, they, when they drill the hole for the plastic, it seems like you got to move the pin around a little bit to find the second hole. You know, you got to fight with it more. Where on the, all my older tubes, I could put the pin in real easy. It slid right through. So I'm fighting with these blue, blue tips more than anything right now. And I wish they would have just stayed the way they were. But there again, that's my opinion. Maybe some of you guys are going to feel that they're you might like that a lot better, I don't know. I don't even know why they're using that, that blue tip is on there. All you need is a, a cotter pin to hold the hold it so that the, the, the primers don't come out, you know. But I thought that was weird that they put a plastic end on it besides the pin. Just added extra expense to it. You know, to buy these, uh, you're talking ridiculous price, but in the long run it pays off because you get three tubes per package and I think they're like 23 bucks or something for a set of three you know and I'll put that in the, the description box so that you'll know the exact price I'll put a link to it from Dylan so you know what they're getting right now in 2018 because uh, you want the up-to-date price Okay, now I gotta ask you guys how you like this thing. 
You think it'd be pretty sweet? I think it is. That's why I bought it. Well, actually, that's not why I bought it. I bought it to try it and see if I liked it. And after I bought it, I found out that, wow, I can really knock these things out quick. I says, I don't even know why you even got the RF100 from Dylan. I might as well sell that thing. Uh, but don't get me wrong. I mean, that's a great machine that Dylan put out. It took a lot of workmanship to figure out how to make that work. A lot of engineering, engineering went into that. So I got to give them guys at Dillon a lot of credit. Now, when I put that video out, there's a, a comment that came through that was told that there was an old man that designed that, that machine. And I haven't done any research on it yet, all right? And I told him I was going to do some research on it and find out all that was put into that machine. And if I can get enough material together, I'm going to put a video out on that. And then I'm going to explain to you the different ways they went about making that machine of what it is. I think it would be kind of interesting to put something like that out. But anyways, uh, now will be the time to hit that like button if you like this video. And uh, I'll be coming out with some more uh, uh, gun stuff here. Not so much gun stuff, but reloading stuff. I don't do any gun stuff, all right? You probably never see me uh, at the firing range because I don't do those type of videos. I just do reloading videos. So with that said, uh, I had talked about doing a video a long time ago and I never got around to doing it yet because I have never got the opportunity to set my machine up for it, the 650 in quite a while. Uh, things have been laid back because I had a little bit of a, a problem that I'm not going to get into right now. That's took took a little bit of time, and I put this whole reloading thing in the corner for a while, so I wasn't doing a lot of it. But uh, now I'm back into it again, and uh, what I had promised to, to show you guys was how my Mr. Bullet Feeder works, and I never got around to showing you that. So I'm going to I'm going to get that up and running, and I'm going to that's going to be my next project. Now, don't expect that right away because I'm not going to be able to get that out that quick. we got a couple other things in store for you on videos, and uh, that will be coming out soon. I'm not going to let you hang for very long. I'll, I'll have that coming out soon. I just bought some uh, bullet tips that require the Mr. Bullet Feeder to uh, accept those bullet tips, and that would be a good time to do a video on it. And I'll show you what it looks like in action. So, okay. Uh, like I said, if you've never been to my channel, subscribe to me. Uh, share this video with others on your social media. That would help a lot. And uh, please hit that like button. That helps my channel out a lot. A lot, a lot. Hit the like button, okay? <laughs> Can't talk right. Hit the like button if you like the video. Even if uh, the video's not the greatest in the world hit it anyway because it's not about if you like my video it's about if you hit the like button it gets my videos out to YouTube and then they promote my channel if I have 150 videos out there and there's no likes on it my my channel is not going anywhere you know so there's a lot of people that probably watch videos and they they forget all about you know, clicking on that button, and I'm just telling you up front, so it's a reminder. And uh, I don't want to be sound like I'm pushy or anything. I'm really sorry if I do, but I gotta do that so that my channel grows. Because otherwise, it's not worth it to put all the, the expense into the filmmaking, the camera work, and the time it takes to go out and do all these videos. So I need uh, to have some support from you guys. I really appreciate it. And the ones that have to subscribe to me, the ones that subscribe to me, I can't thank you guys enough. 
you know we're over 315 we're a small channel it took a long time to get up to that and I really appreciate you guys for subscribing you know when I get to be like all the rest of the people out there that got you know 200,000 subscribers then I'll have a lot more stuff to offer for you guys and I'm gonna to have to learn all those tricks and trades and all that stuff too it looks like they did but right now I'm a small channel and it's up to you guys to help me grow and I really appreciate it if you'd help me grow so that's the name of the story about Hornady and uh, maybe some of you guys don't like Hornady products but I find that this was going to be the one that works the best because I just didn't like the design of what I seen pictures of the other ones you know they, they look chin, real chintzly made and uh, they had one platform for large and small primer and then you had to flip the tray around to use the right hole if you're going to do large or small. Well, you, you take a chance of putting in the gun the wrong way and then you, you can screw everything up. You have small primers going into a large, a large filler. Well, you don't want that. So, yeah, this is the best setup. You got everything laid out for you. You got your large tubes, you got your small tubes. You got your black platform, and they're marked small and large, so you can't go wrong there. You got to look at them real, real hard because you'll see an L on them and you'll see an S on them, and you got you know they're black and they're stamped in there, so you got to look really hard to find it, but it's in there, and that's how you that's how you find out. So, anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go. You have a great uh, weekend, and. Uh, Pretty soon we'll be looking for snow, and then maybe we can do something outside and see all that beautiful white stuff that everybody hates to shovel. But, okay, we'll let you go. You take care. We'll see you guys.